Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Hey everybody, what is happening out there? What are you doing? How's your day? How's your week? How is 2016 shaping up? Um, excited to hear about it. I think for us, for us, I think uh, 2016 is going to be the best year we've had in a while. Um, geez, you guys have really spoken out there. Um, you should see our downloads. It's going great. Going great. Uh, going really well. Couldn't be more pleased. Now, here's here's the deal. Here's the scoop. Um, I've spent the last two weeks, pretty much two weeks, going to conferences, right? I was at, I was in New Orleans last week for Keller Williams Family Reunion, New Orleans. <clears throat> I don't know when's the last time you've been to that town. Um, it is, it is, it is, <laughs> it's old, man. It's, uh, it's a little bit dirty. Um, it's certainly not San Diego. And, uh, and, uh, you know, big food's a big thing there, right? A lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of crazy stuff that I don't normally eat, you know, uh, alligator and crawdads, crawfish and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, I had to try all the local fare and I swear, I was just like, you know what? I got to be careful what I'm eating. I don't want to end up with a, 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 you know, uh, with a case of diarrhea. So I, you know, I'm, I'm careful, you know, I, but I, but I had to sample everything, right? So. You know, I go to the crawfish place, a big open like garden, you know, market, right? Not in a restaurant. I don't know if there's any health food things. And I sort of I order a pound of crawfish, trying to eat the crazy things. And I ask the guy behind the counter, I'm like, hey, man, how do you eat these? You know, and he's like, well, you pull off the tail and you, he showed me you suck out the head, the brains and you eat it. And I was, I was like, yeah, you know, so I, so I tried it um, and, uh, you know, ate some fried shrimp and. Um, I thought I dodged the bullet. I thought I dodged the bullet, right? No diarrhea. Um, cause I eat healthy. I eat healthy here. Um, but dodge the bullet and all of a sudden, you know, I'm back a couple days ago and I wake up this morning and I must have eaten a, some shrimp with a delayed fuse, man. Cause it got me, it got me. Um, but I'm surviving now. I want to talk to you guys. I want to tell you, I'm not, Today's episode is going to be a little bit different than normal. I am, uh, I am going to give you guys. I'm going to release an episode. You know, I have a bunch of stuff in the can, and and if you have been listening to the shows, um, you've been hearing stuff. It's all great content. You know, I, I can tell you the the last episode we released was Nick Waldner, which which again, um, he's he he. I, I hung out with him. I talked to him this morning. I hung out with him last week in New Orleans. I hung out the year bef- the the week before in Tahoe. Um, and I, I swear to God, I don't know. I, I, re- I recorded that one a long time ago, a, like like eight months ago. But the content's still great. You know what I mean? I'm not going to give you guys uh, stale stuff. In fact, I got a couple emails today, and they said, hey, Nick was, you know, I've listened to 150 episodes. Nick uh, was the best one. So I have some stuff. Now, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, um, on uh, I have a bunch of flash drives around here that I have content on, and uh, I can't. Listen to you know when I download one or upload one to iTunes, I, I don't necessarily listen to the whole thing. And and one of the things how I judge the episode is how long it is. So if it's like <clears throat> you know an hour and four minutes, I know that's really good. I stretch it out to the end. Um, if it's thirty minutes, uh, there's something I didn't like about it. Now that could have just been me that day, right? Could have just been me. So so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my experience the last two weeks, and then I'm going to take one of those shorter ones. And uh, and let you listen to it, <clears throat> and you know who knows. I, I wish I wish you guys, I wish you guys. And by the way, you know we're doing that podcast thing, you know, viral cast. So if you ever want to get on this side of the mic and interview somebody, let us know. I mean, I can I can do that, uh, and uh, we can do that for you. Um, and uh, you know, you you get you get episodes or you get interviews that you're just like, oh, what is that? Like, how is that person doing a hundred deals? Because they're doing everything wrong. And I've been tempted. I've been tempted to drop some episodes like with the title of what not to do. Um, But, you know, but I can't talk crap if I guess. So I don't. All right. So, look, 
two conferences, okay? So I'll tell you about the first one, then I'll tell you the other one, then I'm going to tell you why um, why you guys should consider conferences, um, at least one a year. Now, the first one was my GoBundance partners. Um, that's a very small, small group. It's a very invite-only, you know, look, n- not say anything kooky, but it's a, you know, it's an elite group. And the whole value there, I mean, the, the value for conferences, for me, it's not content. I don't go to these conferences to sit in breakout sessions to learn tactics or strategies. I've never gotten that. I've, I've been to plenty, plenty, plenty of conferences throughout my life, and never is it the content. And then there's a big time where I just said, you know, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go to any conferences. I'm not going to buy a ticket, buy a plane ticket, go, stay in a hotel, eat bad food. <clears throat> to go to breakout sessions and not learn anything. And, and I got to tell you that I was thinking wrongly during that time because for me and probably for you, I mean, I I think certainly some people get value out of the content and, and, and speaking, uh, speaking of content, let's talk about content for a second. I sat in some of those breakout sessions and, and I can tell you that for most, most, if the if I would have interviewed that panel or that person, um, those are episodes I would not air. Um, I, I sat in one. Um, I, I'll tell you then the like the, I, I don't think this this person putting on this 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 session listens to the show, so I won't tell you her name, but I'll tell you what it was about. It's about a pre listing package now or packet. I'm working out with one of my radio guys. How do we optimize the time between you get the phone call? Let's say you get a phone call on Monday. Hey, Toby, I'm interested in listing my house. I ask you a couple questions, blah, blah, blah. Hey, I make an appointment for Friday. Um, and then I hang up the phone. How do I optimize Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday so that by the time I walk into that, that meeting, that appointment on Friday, I am set up to kill it, right? How do we do that? So I, I've been working with one of my radio guys specifically on optimizing that small time frame. What can we do to deepen that relationship, to build that relationship, to make him super valuable to where when he walks into that, that appointment on Friday that they're just ready to list? Okay, so, so you know, we're coming up with a strategy around a pre-listing packet. So there happened to be a breakout session uh, on pre-listing packets. Uh, so we walk in this room. There's about a thousand people in there. It's a giant room. Um, and then the girl says, "Hey guys, this is one of the only sessions that we are live streaming around the world." So I'm like, "Okay, this should be good, right?" One of the only thousand people. Are. The content was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. This girl said, oh, there was no pre-listing packet. There was nothing. She, what she did was she got this stupid box, painted it with like chalkboard paint, uh, and like wrote some cr- crazy chalkboard crap, some fake flowers, um, <clears throat> um, some like hand sanitizer, um, then it had a little packet with like some testimonials and she's like, Oh, listen. So then I have the courier take it to their office and uh, gosh, it's just such a big hit. This is what, this is my pre-listing package. And the whole time I'm going, are you joking me? Like there is no value for, for the consumer in that, in that box of garbage. Uh, I'm being super judgy right now. Right. (laughs) I've been traveling for two weeks. So, so, but there's no value in there, right? And not to mention, and she's like, listen, we take it to their place of work. And let me tell you something. If you call me as an agent and and I talk to you about listing my house and then you bring this big box of trash into my place of work, well, guess what? Maybe I don't want anybody to know I'm selling, right? Maybe I don't want my boss to know I just got a promotion or I'm taking another job and I'm selling because I'm going to leave. Like, are you kidding me? <clears throat> So that was quote unquote one of the better breakout sessions, and it was and it was garbage. And if Gary Keller is listening to this, Gary, don't like don't come vet your vet your speakers. So I don't go to the conferences for content, and I don't know that you should either. Here's the value of conferences: it's all about relationships. You know, I mean, if you have been listening to the show for a while, a long time ago, I did an episode, and the and the title of that that episode was your network equals your net worth. 
this world is all about relationships and the better, the more and better relationships you can have, the better your business is going to be. I mean, you literally could have a thriving business by knowing a hundred influencers in and out of your market. So for me, I go to build those relationships and I, you know, and I don't ask for anything. The, the only thing I ask when I meet with these people is how can I help you? And, and I'm a giver, man. You know, you guys know that, right? That's why I do this show. Um, 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 and, 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 and for me, it was a pretty neat, Pretty neat experience a little bit, um, you know, because I've been doing this show. We have, you know, we have a pretty big footprint across the world. Uh, so <laughs> bragging, hashtag bragging. Um, but, you know, we have a pretty big footprint and uh, it was pretty neat, right? So I go to Tahoe, very high level guys. And, you know, it was, it, you know, I'd, I'd walk in, I'd go sit at a table and there's a group of six guys and all of a sudden like four of them would stop talking and start looking at me, right? And I, and I start talking and I know, like I can sense, I've done this for a while, like I know they're listeners. I know they're going, okay, I'm going to listen to Toby, see what he has to say. And uh, so that's kind of cool. And then like, and then, and then if I ask, they're like, yeah, I know who you are. And, uh, and, uh, and the, the, the neat thing for me is... I have this, I have this, uh, you know, this group, this high level group of guys that I hang out with. Um, and these are all dudes that do panels at the breakout sessions. So I could walk to any room and, and I know somebody on the panel. Now, how, how is that helpful to me? Right. How that is helpful to me is all of a sudden, because I know these influencers and the, the other influencers that I don't know want to get to know me because like, I'm, I clearly am somebody that, that he should know or they should know because I know everybody else. So there's value in that. And, and I, I think that, I think that uh, you know, if you, guys, if you guys thought about building relationships as a long, long tail way to build your business, you know, it, it's, it's horrible to try to build relationships for the pure fact of building business. That's, that's not how it should work. It should be truly, I want to get to know you. I want to see how I can help you. And you know what? That translates, that's bilateral. It's good. If I, if I deliver value to you, you're going to deliver value to me. So, so I encourage you guys to do two things. <clears throat> One, attend conferences, uh, with the intent of, of building new relationships. And look, some of you guys are maybe like, you know, in terms of the disc profile, you know, high S, high C, you're not me, right? You're not D I, you know, 99 D 99. I. So you, maybe you're, 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 you don't feel comfortable. Um, if I'm standing in a group that, and you kind of know who I am to walk up and you say, Hey, my name's Katie. My name's Julie. My name's Timmy, Tommy, Jimmy, whatever. Um, so I would just say, stretch yourself. And, and I think the more that you can stretch yourself, Every day, and not this is not just at conferences. This is, you know, in your marketplace. You know, what what entrepreneur, investor, um, uh, you know, financial planner, what whatever, right? All these people out there in your market that could help your business, right? You know, CPA, probate attorney. W- w- who of those guys can you go out and build a genuine, authentic relationship with? Now, I've done it with a podcast, right? The show has been phenomenal for that, right? Every, like, you know, and, and again, I'm not hashtag bragging. I don't want it to come off like that at all. But, you know, I commonly will get on a phone call <coughs> with somebody and, and um, you know, and they'll say, well, geez, I, I listen to you. I know who you are. And, um, boy, you know, it, it feels like I'm talking to a celebrity, right? That's what they'll say to me. And that's fine. I hear it, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and I've had that same experience myself with listening to other people. I, I know, that, you know, whatever. But, but, and I didn't intend to do that. I intend to be, you know, a celebrity on air. But, you know, when you, when you have listeners, when you have an audience, right, that's how, that's how kind of what happens. So I'm saying for you, you can do that same thing, you know, whether it's through a podcast or not. And I, and I, would, I, I would urge you all to think about how you can build your own platform, right? And you can, a platform can be many things. It could be, you could be a big blogger and build an audience that way. Um, you know, you could be... <coughs> You could be, you know, the organizer of meetups, but as long as you are doing something with people, right? Because that's what this, you know, they, money makes the world go around or whatever, but really it's friendships. It's relationships that makes the world go around. And, and the more, the more, oh, hold on, my phone's ringing. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> hold on one sec. Oh shit, I didn't cancel. I didn't hey, Merrick. Hey, buddy. 
All right, let's talk about some of the key takeaways from the conference. Um, Gary Keller, um, a few things that he keyed in on here. Um, and the first thing, uh, and he, he like freaked a bunch of people out because he quoted Game of Thrones and he said, hey, guys, winter is coming. Now, if you look at real estate um, through the past, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, whatever. I mean, real estate's cyclical. You guys know that, right? But these booms happen and then busts happen. Now, the booms, again, looking at history, the booms last between seven and 10 years. Okay. Now, Gary, you know, postulated that the boom started in uh, 2011. So, you know, add seven to that. And, uh, you know, what do you come up with? And he said, well, you know, we have another good year. Now, I think that's early um, because here in San Diego, uh, you know, the booms, the recovery, I should say, you know, it was first a recovery and then it was a boom, but the recovery started to happen in 2013. And, um, and I don't know. Um, so uh, whatever, I'll just say that. So Gary said, winter's coming, batten down the hatches and start to think about what, how, how to develop your business, how to build your business in such a way that when the boom uh, ends, right, when the downturn comes, you don't get washed out to sea. And, you know, if you go back to 2005, a lot of people, that happened to a lot of people, right? A lot of people out there, 2005, were strutting around, going buying a brand new, uh, you know, Porsche 911, and they thought they were rock stars. And in reality, they weren't. They were just riding the wave, right? Uh, when, when the tides rise, all ships rise, right? Or however that saying goes. Um, so, so, you know, and other people that were deliberate and, and, and kind of looked to the future, they were able to not only weather the storm, but thrive in that storm. Because I can tell you, go again, look at history. More money is made in downturns than in upturns. Um, and, uh, you know, with, with, with upturns, you know, and I'll tell you, today really feels a lot like 2005, 2006 to me. And it's felt like that for a long time. You know, and you can kind of see it, especially in real estate. When you go to the grocery store and that 19-year-old girl that is bagging your groceries, that, that hasn't gone to school, that hasn't done anything, and she's talking about, hey, I'm getting my real estate license, that's a big red flag. You're like, oh, oh you know, hold on, right? That's, that says something. And I, again, I think I, I feel that. I see that around. So what are you, how can you um, hedge against a downturn? How can you diversify right now? And that leads into, that into Gary's second big point. Now, uh, and this is huge. I talk about this all the time. And I probably don't give it, I'm going to start talking about it more because I probably don't give it as much weight as I should be giving it uh, for you guys. And that is that, you know, what, it's permission-based marketing. What is that, right? That's a fancy way of saying your database, right? Build your database. Build a list of people, a list that you can market to. You know, the people that, that, that uh, say, hey, yeah, Toby, go ahead and market to me. That will carry you through. So, so build your list, market to your list. And Gary went so far as to say, your database is your business. And I would agree with that. Um, you know, if we look at, if we go back and look at business at a high level, you know, you are either a prospector, right? The classic Wall Street, I'm going to make 100 phone calls a day, turn them and burn them. Uh, um, or you are, you know, you're a chaser prospector or you're an attraction business, right? Marketing. And and the thing with the database is, you know, it takes work to build your list, takes work to get people into your l database. But once they're there, right, now you can start to dev get into customer development, right? Build a relationship with these people. And, um, and maybe I should do a session or an episode about how to do this. But I'll tell you how I build my list. So two years ago, right, we'll launch a show. Um, I didn't have, I didn't have, uh, let's say I started with a, a list of zero because I fundamentally kind of did in a lot of ways. Um, you know, um, the easiest way to build your database, right, um, is always have some kind of mechanism on, right? So something that is passive, something that's working in the background. And for me, that's my website. And I commonly tell you guys, hey, go and, and download my book. Like, get, I'll give you something of value, whether it's my free membership site, downloading my book, um, or whatever, and, and you give me your email address. Um, because you guys are you guys. If you're listening to this show and you have been listening to this show, you know, you guys are the new elite. Um, the people who are on top right now, right, you guys are, you guys are going to go out and, and, and like, 
You guys are going to be number ones. Um, so, you know, right now, start building your database. So if you don't have something on your site to, to collect email addresses, and that could be writing an ebook, right? How to, you know, seven tips on how to increase curb appeal, how to sell your house for the most money, whatever it is. I mean, there's a million things, right? Add some kind of value there because look, you are blowing it if you don't, right? All traffic, all web traffic is either earned or it is paid for, right? You're either earning it by meeting people out in the market and they go, oh, hey, look, who's that Toby guy? Let me go, let me Google him, let me go to his website. And, you know, you might see the traffic, but if you're not trying to slowly convert that traffic, um, that's a wasted opportunity, right? I mean, you got the, you did all the hard work, you got people to your website. Um, again, whether you met people in the marketplace or you were buying Facebook ads or Google pay-per-click, it is a tragedy, travesty, whatever, if you are earning traffic and you're not trying to to interact with that traffic. The, as well as, you know, do you have a database? You do, of, of something, right? I don't know how big it is. But are you actively communicating with it, right? You, you, you probably are not. Um, so, again, takeaway number two for you guys is, your database is your business. I, I'd love for you to think about how you can uh, increase your database. And for me, like I'll tell you, for me, like weird crap happens. Weird stuff happens. I will, you know, I use Aweber. So every time somebody somebody registers, uh, and, 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 and for me, like with the, I'll tell you what I do. <clears throat> so I have three ways on my site that I can get your email address, right? So number one, I've literally gated it. So if you go to superagentslive.com, uh, and you haven't been there before, you go there and boof, like, like what you see, it looks like you have to give me your name and email address to, to get past that. You don't, um, you can close it out. So that's why I gate you, right? And you guys can do the same thing, right? Pop-up boxes, everybody hates them, but they work, right, in terms of marketers. And don't be scared to use a pop-up box in your biz. Um, um, you know, d- 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 sure, are you going to get bounce? Yeah, but that's Okay. That's all right. Don't, you know, if those people are going to bounce off your site because of of a pop-up box, you're probably not going to, you know, don't have a great shot at working that person anyway. So, so I have a big, uh, uh, light box they're called, um, number one, number two, if you, if you, you, maybe you could just close that out, um, which you can right the up, up, upper right. You can close it out. Um, then I have a book, how to sell, right? So, so if I didn't get you for the, at the gate, then hopefully you, uh, go, Hey, let me read this, this guy's, you know, free book. Um, and then the other thing is I have a free membership site where I, and if you guys haven't signed up for that, you should, I have, I have pre listing packages. I have some tracking sheets. I mean, it's free. Why not? Okay. <clears throat> so database is your business. Now the, 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 um, and, and the other, just one last thing on this, the other piece of this is th- th- your database is a whole pillar, right? Just like expires might be a pillar or Fizbo's might be a pillar or radio might be a pillar. Um, your database is a whole pillar, and um, and uh, in it, it is a hedge. Uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a way to diversify your business, um, other than just straight prospecting or marketing. All right, moving on. Last thing, last thing, um, uh, and then we'll move on to whatever whatever episode I'm going to release. Um, you know, Gary really encouraged you guys to start building a company. Right. And not having a business. Now, the difference between a business and a company is I see it all the time. Right. It's a mistake if you have Toby Salgado real estate team. Right. All of a sudden, I'm the business. Number one, I can't sell that because I'm the main thing. But number two, you know, if it's Toby Salgado real estate or or, you know, the Toby Salgado team, whatever it is, you know, and a lot of you guys are making that mistake right now, you know, putting your face up in front as the brand, well, guess what? Like, everyone's going to want to talk to you. So all of a sudden, you become necessary to your quote-unquote business. That's a mistake. Um, and I'll, I'll, let me tell you, just, just beside the point, you know, one other mistake that drives me bananas is that you crazy realtors, some somebody, some real estate agent 30 years ago um, decided to put his face on his card to put his face on the yard sign for whatever reason. And I see it all the time. Why in the world, why in the world do you have your face on your card? No other industry in the world does this. It's only real estate agents. It's old. It's tired. It's useless. Take your face off your card. It's not good. It's not going to help you get business unless you're gorgeous, right? Some, you're, you know, good looking like me, um, 
joking. Um, um, not really. But, uh, you know, take your face off your card. So, so build, a business, build a company, not a business. So the first piece of building a business is, is number one, don't tie your commerce to you. Um, the second thing is go get an admin, guys. Get somebody who can do the work for you, right? This comes, there's so many reasons for this. But the main reason is, you know, what is your time worth? What do you want to make an hour? 50 bucks, 100 bucks, 200, 500, $1,000 an hour? Whatever that number is. If you can outsource those tasks for less than that amount, let's say it's 100 bucks an hour you want to make. Uh, you know, in 100 bu- if you can make 100 bucks an hour, eight hours a day, that's 200 grand a year, right? 400, 400 bucks a day is 100 grand. 800 bucks a day is 200 grand. That's a good number. Um, so, so if you want to make 100 bucks an hour, whatever you're doing that's not $100 an hour work, outsource it. Get done, right? Give it away. Hire somebody else to do it. You'll be, you'll, you're, number one, you're on track to building a company, number one. But number two, you know, you're, use your time where you can win. Um, and look, a great book on this is, um, is Michael Gerber's E-Myth. If you haven't read that, go, go check it out. And you can, and, and, you know, just get it, on, get it on Audible. Go to superagentslive.com. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Go to audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. And when you, you know, get, get a free copy. And look, when you do that, to be honest with you, uh, you know, every time that happens, uh, Audible sends us 15 bucks. Um, we're not going to get rich off that, but, uh, but, uh, it, it's, it's pretty neat. You know, I, we get checks all the time for two, 300 bucks. Anyhow. <clears throat> all right. So last takeaway is go get an admin outsource the stuff that number one, you don't like to do or out and or outsource stuff that is, uh, less than, uh, than what you ideally want to make per hour. Um, um, you know, and then Gary talked also about, you know, find your one thing. Um, and if you, that's a good book, too, if you haven't read that one. One thing. Uh, and lastly, lastly, I would say, and this is kind of this is kind of like what I've been thinking lately is just just elevating your profile. Um, and and I, I'll, 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 you know, I'll, I've been sharing a lot about me. So I'll tell you about me. I mean, I've done a pretty good job of elevating my profile. Um, not as good as I could have or should have, but, you know, I'm pretty recognizable. That's cool. You know, I'm walking down, you know, Bourbon Street in New Orleans and, you know, uh, every one block, somebody read, recognize me, which, you know, that's, that's kind of cool. Um, but elevate your profile. And I can tell you, I'll tell you a quick, quick story <clears throat> about this kid. Um, I'll say his name, I guess. Good guy. His name is Matt Aitchison. Now, Matt, I met Matt a few years ago, um, 26 years old, building a business, pretty, a pretty diversified business, right? He's got, uh, he's got the retail real estate on one side, and then he does a bunch of flips on the other side. Um, and I think he did like a hundred flips last year. Pretty, pretty successful kid. <clears throat> now that was two years ago. I met him. Um, he is now 28 years old and he has done such a great job with elevating his profile, you know, meeting the right people, developing relationships with those people. Guess what? He was doing, you know, he's doing panels at family reunion, 28 years old. Like he's coming out of nowhere. He's from Sacramento, California, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's not man, Beverly Hills. It's Sacramento. So for you guys, you know, what are your goals for your business? What are your goals for your personal brand? Um, and go out and elevate your profile. So um, I, hope, uh, I hope that was uh, somewhat helpful for you guys. And uh, let's get to that episode. Now, again, um, I've been talking, so um, I'm going to find an episode that is uh, a short one. Um, I can see the links. I, I can guarantee you whatever I'm going to release, I haven't listened to. And I just want to let you know that... When they're short, um, said, there's a reason why I cut it short. All right. Hey, uh, I hope you have a great week. Talk to you soon. No, nope, I'm good to go. Here we go. Hold on. Today on the show, look, today's guest is uh, currently looks a lot like you guys. When he's got an interesting background. Um, he's in Denver. Um, he, in terms of a team, he doesn't really – today he doesn't have a team. It's him and he's got one assistant. However – uh, in the past, he he had seven agents working with him, a couple a couple admin, and he scaled back down. Now, last year, he did twenty seven deals. Now, that probably looks a lot like you guys. However, um, you know, he 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 peaked in the past at about one twenty. So, we're going to talk a little bit about why lifestyle wise or whatever why he's scaling back. I'm thrilled to welcome Jeff Gad. Hey, Jeff, thanks for taking the time out, man. Hey, thank you. So, Jeff, I, I, I've given the audience a brief overview, kind of nuts and bolts of, of what you look like today and where you've been in the past. Uh, but before we get there um, and, and talk about what's working, what's not, why you've scaled back, take a minute and tell the audience uh, and myself a little bit about yourself. 
Um, I've been a realtor for almost 15 years. Um, I approach my business a little different than most in that when I work with my customers, buying on the buy side, basically it's a lot about investment. Uh, To me, it's their biggest investment uh, that they're probably going to make in their life. So we talk a lot about, uh, you know, neighborhoods, uh, location in that neighborhood. You know, we don't want something that backs to a busy street, even though it's a hot market right now. Someday it's not going to be. So on the listing side, really, it's um, it's about the advertising and everything that we do. That's the one thing that's special about Coldwell Banker. It costs me a little more to work there, but their advertising is pretty much second to none, which is why I'm there. Um, and pricing and all those things are super important. Um, I'm just that guy. My strength is reading people. And um, I, I mean, if anybody's listening as an agent, that's probably your greatest asset is to be able to read somebody depending on their personality style, because if they don't talk, you got to be able to read what they're doing and what they're thinking. So, okay. So reading people, um, um, now let me back. I, I, you jumped into, you started out with, you know, just you being a realtor 15 years. What did you do, you do before that? Um, I was a quality control inspector for four years and a, uh, plastics engineer for 13 or 14, 14 years. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, so an engineer to quality control, and then to real estate. Now, this 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 ability of being able to read people is that. So I want to I want to know a little bit more about that. But is that something? You, um, did you learn that along the way, or is that something that's just innate in you? Do you kind of have Jedi powers? Just, just, just. Is that just? Uh, no, no. I, I didn't even realize I had them until I got into real estate. And uh, you know, when you're uh, During your time with your clients, uh, the look on their face, the way they react, the tone in their voice, you know, all those things are super important because uh, a large majority of the people out there aren't going to tell you what's exactly on their mind and what they're thinking. And um, I think it's important to um, ask them their thoughts on everything so that you can get a good read on what they're doing Um, because in efficiency – You know, they're not always going to be available when a house comes on the market, especially a hot market. So you've got to know what they're thinking, what they like, and uh, go out there. And, I mean, you can preview 20 properties in the time that it'll take to show them four, five, six. So it's just an efficiency thing. Um, And I think that your client, once they really get to, to know you and you have those abilities, it just creates a trust um, that's ongoing for a long period of time. Now, do you, do you, again, I, I want to spend a few minutes on this. So on this, this reading people, is that, do, did you, um, did you get some formal training on it or again, or, or again, is it just, you just are, you would have it. Yeah, I have the force. No, yeah, I just have it. And I didn't realize it okay. until, uh, you know, literally my first listing and I was doing an open house, like most, most new agents. And, um, I just always approached him at the end and said, hey, you know, um, I realize sometimes, you know, realtors can be this, that or the other, but I care about people and I love the opportunity to work for you. And they just saw something in me. And uh, that's when I started to realize that I had that talent. And uh, I can't I mean, if you don't have the talent, go find some books or something, anything you can do to get it, because it's it's huge. I mean, even just over the phone, their tone and their voice, you know, what they're saying, um, knowing when to back off, when to say something, you know, or if you don't have the read, you know, 95% of the time I'm right on the money, but every now and then I'm not. And you just have to ask them, hey, um, is this what I heard you say? Blah, blah, blah. And uh, most of the time you're right. But, you know, if you don't know, ask and they'll they should tell you, you know, very rarely. Not once if you ask or they're not going to tell you what's on their mind. Yeah. So, so look, and I'll tell you, Jeff, I, I have that, I have that same ability and, and I, and, and, you know, I can, even when I'm speaking, you know, I do a lot of public speaking, I can speak to a room and I can feel the room. I can feel it when they, when I have them and when I don't. And again, I, I, uh, you know, I don't know for me if it's, if it's innate or not. So, so if, when we think about communication, when we think about what you're at talking about right now, reading people, we know that, right. A certain portion uh, is is body language. A certain portion is your the word you're saying. A certain portion is the tonality that you're using. 
Um, what when you approach a person or when you are, you're in a conversation with a person, what is it that you focus on? Is it their is it their body posture, their tonality? What talk us through a little bit of that if you can. I would say all of it, but the majority is the expression on their face and the tone in their voice. Um, uh, especially when you walk into unknown situations. I mean, you know, I think it's super important, you know, as everyone knows, just to ask him right out of the gate, what's important to you? What are you looking for? I think the other important thing in being a realtor that's been proven a lot of success for me, and sometimes it's a hindrance, but, uh, you know, really telling them everything, every speed bump along the way so that when something happens, it's not a shock to them. Mm -hmm. But um, back to the subject, um, really it's the the tone in their voice and the look on their face are number one. And, 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 and how do you use that to your, to your benefit or, or to the, the benefit of the situation? Meaning that, you know, if you, you know, they're, they're you, you, with their tonality, you might feel, you might get the sense like, Oh, they're unsure. Right. And you can, you can also see that in their face. They're unsure, but maybe they don't know how to approach it or they really like this, what I'm saying. Right. How, is there any way that you use these, uh, these these uh, hints, these clues, um, in order for your benefit or the benefit of the situation. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you, uh, you, you. I guess the best way to describe it was early on. Um, I was part of Brian Buffini, and they do this um, reading on you, and it, it was just amazing. I mean, uh, if any realtors are listening, definitely by all means do that. Um, even if you're not part of the system, see if it's, if they're able, you know, pay for it because they ask you questions for about 30 minutes and then they'll call you back in a week. And, um, it was like, I was talking to God. So where I'm going with this is one of my problems was, is that I would, what they called overfeeding the pygmies and too much information. Mm. And so that's the engineering you, when you. you're talking to. What, I'm sorry. I, that's probably the engineer in you that you get into the, you get into the weeds with with people and and you know give them all sorts of details that maybe is not important to them or they just you know is again I, right. ju- I shouldn't have jumped in. So there. oh no, it's okay. I mean, basically, uh, when you're giving them information, you can see in their response, you know, whether you should c- continue, um, whether they like what you're giving them or they don't. Um, I mean, if they're new, they they always like it. If they've got some experience, um, you know, a, cu- a little bit of it to try and get a reaction at them to see what they're, you know, if they're into it uh, and they like what you're saying or they already know about it or, you know, that's why you always try and get a read on them. If you're not getting the read, ask the question and you, mm-hmm. they'll tell you. And that, I think that's by far the most important thing. But it works really well because once you've got it, it, it just makes everything so much easier. So, so, but I, I, I agree with, I agree with that. If you have that information, it makes everything easier. But I, I think that the problem um, that I think, and again, I want you to address this is that you might say, uh, uh, well, hold on, let me back up again. What you said earlier, Jeff, is that you, uh, you working with buyers, you treat it as them making an investment. Okay. So you, so you're, you're thinking about neighborhood. You're thinking about, uh, you know, resale. You're thinking about this as an investment. When you ask somebody, hey, how important is neighborhood? When you ask somebody, hey, how important is, is uh, reducing your commute or being closer to work? Um, I, and then putting all of those together and prioritizing, I don't think that people know how to do that. So how, when you are asking people those questions, because you're trying to get a sense of what is truly important to them, how do you dig information out of them that maybe they're not fully able to uh, prioritize and stack in order of importance? Well, your your question's kind of uh, very broad there, but uh, the the best way that I can answer it, the way I understood you, you asking it, is during the first conversation that I'm talking with them, I just tell them, look, I am a money realtor. I will tell you where your money is. Now, I don't want you to take this as and I'm talking to my client here, I I don't want you to take this as um, gospel or trying to tell you what to do. I'm just telling you where your money is. So if we go out and we find a house and you fall in love with it and it backs to a busy street, you know that because I've already told you. And if that's the house you want, I'm not going to talk you out of it. But as long as you understood what my thought process is in your money, 
then that's all I needed you to know. Because if I can give you the tools to succeed, which I'm going to, then you have all the information you need. Um, uh, as far as, I, I guess the other thing to try and uh, try and answer your question is uh, another great aspect of uh, training was when I was part of the Platinum Group with uh, Greg Proctor. Hmm. Uh, they have what's called a disc test, yep. and I don't want to go into it too too deeply. We but, talk about it all the time on the show. So that's yeah, okay. okay. So your C personalities, I mean, those are the ones that you have to watch out for because if you don't give them their space, uh, those are the people that are most likely not going to share with you. And those are the people most likely not going to sign a contract with you right now. Those are the people that need to sit back and really think. And you got to know to give them their space because if you push, you're you're done. Well, and again, like to, to, to simplify that, the C can stand for cautious. And those are the people that like all the, 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 the T's crossed, the I's dotted. Those are nightmare people in my mind. I, I, for me, like I'm high D, high I. I would not work with a, with a high C. Yeah, yeah, and I will. You just got to know. You know, you, you you've got to know which personality they are, and and um, sure, and how to and approach work it. With yeah, it. yeah. And look, here's my my question, um, and it was a long winded question, so I apologize about that. What I was trying to get at is is if if you ask any triggering questions, right? So you say, hey, how important is is being near work? How important is is uh, a large backyard or or neighborhood or lifestyle? You know, do you have any questions that you uh, – triggering questions that you make them go one, two, or three steps deeper on that, on that, that, uh, that, that point? Absolutely. During the very first conversation, what is it that you're looking for in a house? How many bedrooms, bathrooms, et cetera, yard, all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that conversation, which one is the most important to you? Which is got to have? Which ones might you be willing to give in on? And that didn't used to be the case, but it is now because our market is so hot it's crazy, that huh? if you price it even remotely right, it, it's gone. And you, you got to be Johnny on the spot and know, you know, right away. Yeah. And, and do you, when they say, when they say, oh, geez, if, if the woman says, oh, geez, you know, we want it because everybody wants everything, right? I want seven bedrooms, a, a, a half an acre front yard, you know, uh, a pool and a gourmet kitchen. Um, when they tell you all that. Um, do, do, again, do you have any specific questions to say, okay, let's, let's talk about the gourmet kitchen. You know, why is that important to you? Right. Do, do you drill down on those things or do you just ask them once at a high level and then move? No, on? no. I mean, um, they tell me all these things and if that's the type of person that they are, they got to have all this, you know, it's a dream world buyer's market out there and all that stuff. Uh, again, it's getting a read on them. And if that's what they're thinking, uh, then you, you really can't push it and you got to let them experience it. Uh, just recently last month, in fact, I closed one with my best friend and, um, we walked into an absolutely gorgeous house, had to have it, but they're VA. And, um, I told them, you know, what it was going to be like, and I knew they weren't going to get the house, but I spent the time with them, wrote the contract, you know, did all my due diligence with the listing agent. And of mm. course they didn't get it because yeah. it's a VA loan, sure. but then they experienced it. And, it, you know, it, and that's when you got to know whether you're keeping your client or not, because uh, the majority of the people that are out there are going to get it. And at that point, they got it. And they were like, well, you know, wh where do we go from here? And I'm like, well, you know, that other house that you really like that we talked about that it's overpriced Monday, if it's still on the market, let's put an offer. And sure enough, it was overpriced. Monday, we came in um, 10 low and got it. I just got to look for those opportunities, let them experience it for themselves. The smart ones, which are the majority, you know, the people out there, they'll get it. Yeah. And, I think then, and the point is just let them, let them experience it if they're not getting it. You know, it doesn't take much. Do you, okay. Do you, and this kind of, this kind of gets back into sort of your, your style, right? You, you know, with the buyers, you uh, treat them as an investment and you walk them through it. Now, do you, kind of like with that person here, here's what I would have done, right? You know, and I know what's going to happen. You're going to write this VA offer on this house and they're not going to get it for X and Y reasons. Do you tell them, listen, I'm going to tell you exactly, well, I'll do all the work for you, but I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. Do you do that in order to 
build trust for the next deal so that they, 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 they treat you as your, their real estate advisor. Absolutely. And that's what I did right up front. You okay. know, they told me they were VA loan and, um, and I said, you know, here's your speed bump that I want you to look for. It may or may not happen, but here's the way it is. The market's so hot out there on competing offers. Here's the problem with your FHA and VA loans. If you're competing with a conventional or a cash offer, uh, which we all know what the differences are and, um, kind of expect it. You may get lucky, but that's what it's probably going to look at. Let's go out and experience it and see what happens. And um, sh- sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Now, do you also? And I didn't push it. Right. Okay. And you, but so so do you also? You know uh, how? T- talk to me or talk to us about the the how you communicate each step of the process. Like, hey guys, look, here's the deal. Let, let's say you get lucky and they accept your VA offer. The next step here is we have to do an inspection. Let me tell you, like, do, do you, I'm trying to get a sense of if you forecast all the stuff for them and, and it's, it's to manage them along the way. Yeah. And I think what's an important point here is forecasted in a very calm way and everything uh, for buyers. You have to be careful what you forecast for sellers, mm. because sometimes you may shoot yourself in the foot. You know, for instance, um, happened to me just last week, uh, a lady that I know very well, her late husband was actually my best friend. And they bought out in a community acre and a half. Everybody buys out there to get away from everything. Well, they bought their property right on the edge of the highway. And um, my forecast for it was like, um, you know, just just beware, you know, that that the uh, that road may be a hindrance. And she got pissed. And uh, you know. My, it's something that you see. I mean, every day in real estate is a learning process. It, it's never ending. You never know at all. You're always going to run into something different. So my suggestion is forecast everything of what it might look like to a buyer. Um, be careful what you say and how you say it um, so that they they just have the expectation. And then on the listing side, be careful what you forecast. Okay. Um, because you, as we all know, if sometimes it, they might get the feeling that you don't think their house is absolutely beautiful and there's a problem. Right. So that would be my suggestion. Be care. Don't, don't forecast too much on, you know, condition, location and things like that on the listing. You may mention it slightly, but don't bring it up again. Interesting. Okay. So, so, so we all know, well, you and I know that Denver, cause we have a radio client there, as I mentioned to you before, Denver is crazy hot right now. Listings are like non-existent. They're really hard to get. And that's kind of across the nation. That's, that's Denver is a, a little bit of an outlier, but not, not much. Uh, what in this environment, Jeff, what are you doing to, to go out and find listings? You know, to be honest with you, um, I'm kind of, uh, and this will answer the question why I've scaled down just a little bit. Um, In doing it for 15 years and taking people and really caring about people uh, as a realtor is huge. I'm just lucky enough right now where I don't have to work so hard and I'm trying to decide what I want to do as far as the real estate thing um, for the future. Because here's the thing. Uh, any of us that are team leaders and uh, big teams and things like that, the number one problem with the team is is that your agents come in, you know, um, I had a family atmosphere, everything was absolutely fantastic, except when the money starts getting really good and all those things. And if they even follow 20% of what you tell them to do, they're going to be successful and they're going to leave. So you, you just got to... Uh, I think the the thing there is what are you giving your 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 people? I mean, if you're part of uh, you know a Keller Williams or a Coldwell Banker or something like that, it becomes hard to really have a team in uh, companies like that. Um, whereas if you're the owner of your own brokerage, then you can have your own systems and things like that that they can't get anywhere else, which I think is the key uh, to having a really great team. Um, otherwise, you're going to struggle, and that's why I've scaled back just a little bit. And um, so, um, I'm sorry, I forgot a lot of the questions. That's, that's right. kind of what a- rung my mind. And and but as far as doing it for 15 years, the one thing I want to point out is is my information's a year old, but in 2013, 9,000 realtors here in Denver 
uh, of that 9,000, half of them did zero deals for the entire year yeah. when one of the hottest markets. The 30% of them averaged, 30% of the remaining 50% averaged 1.5 deals, and the remaining 20% did all the business, which is no surprise to all of us. But here's the thing. 77% of the clients polled said that they received less than desirable service. So what's that mean to your client? Well, you'd have to interview 100 agents to find, what, six, seven, eight that are exceptional at what they do. Um, strive for exceptional. And uh, that's where your success is. So, okay. So, and I agree with that. Um, now, um, I'm on your I'm on your your website, which is your Denver home team. That's yours, right, Jeff? I just want to be clear about yes. that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, if I get there, I land on your landing page, yourdenverhometeam.com. You have an mm-hmm. offer that we use something like this in radio. Your home sold in 27 days guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Now we do that same thing. And I'll tell you again, our guy out there is Troy Hansford. We were doing on the radio. We'll sell your house in 10 days guaranteed. Didn't, mm-hmm. didn't, didn't move the needle. Amazingly mm-hmm. enough, did not move the needle. Um, how are you, this offer and, but you should update it by the way. I'm look. I just opened it. Yeah, no, that I was just going to say it's, it's about a year out of date. Yeah. Um, at least. Yeah, August, well, August, uh, tw- gee, August 12th. Gee, look at that. Today's August 12th. Um, so it's exactly <laughs> two years old when you last posted this. So um, right. how, how are you using this to, again, your benefit or to get listings? You know, um, it's one of those processes um, in technology that, uh, you know, I'm approaching in the next 30 days because the way technology is changing, having a search engine on your site um, – I mean, it's a good thing, but it doesn't compare to them just going to the RE Colorado now and uh, because everything's a feed off of there. Yep. And, uh, you know, to, to be honest with you, um, anything else is a disservice to your client if you're not sending them there because everything else is a feed, everything. So the information they're getting from Trulia and blah, blah, blah uh, is all the old information. And so um, I'm still trying to decide what to do with it. I think that you do have a search engine on your site, uh, but you've got to be willing to, you know, just to draw somebody in. But you also have to be willing to, to say, hey, you need to go here because this is where you're going to get the best information. And at the same aspect, technology, again, is so huge. You can just go to RE Colorado, plug in your client's stuff, and it'll automatically email it to you. And to them within, you know, what, 10, 15 minutes of the time it's listed. So um, here's what I'm getting at. Technology. Yeah, yeah. Here's what I'm getting at, though. So 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 you have this great offer. And again, it's it's it was probably great in 2012. Not so great in 2015, just because especially in your market. So your home sold in 27 days. (laughs) Let's say that right. it was. I'll sell your home in five days, or um, or yeah, whatever. more like three. We have like three, right. as long as it, yeah. So so how are, how are you getting this out to? You have to drive traffic. This is having. I'll sell your home in three days is no good unless people see that Jeff Gad can do that. How are you getting this mm-hmm. out to the world? You know, I'm just going to be really honest yeah. with you. I've just kind of scaled back for the last year and uh, taken some time off um, uh, before I jump back in it. Probably next year is when I'm going to come back in it, and that's why you can kind of see the website the way it is and everything. So as far as driving people there and everything, um, you're not. Okay. I'm just going to tell you I've spent thousands and thousands of dollars on websites throughout the years of being a real estate agent, and um You've got to do something along the line of SEO capability. You have to have a website that is not a templated site because they just don't work on SEO. If you listen to anything I say and you're doing on your advertising, listen to this. You know, it's like uh, I love Craig Proctor, but their website uh, that they sell all their agents isn't that great because it's a templated site. It won't do what a custom site will do on SEO, search engine optimization. Then you get. Then you got to get something right there. You know, your house sold in three days. You know, what is it that you're after? And um, the other research that you need to do is whoever's doing that SEO has capability to a website, to whatever the most popular Google search words are. You know, uh, Denver homes for sale, whatever the hell it is. Excuse my language. Then use those uh, to drive people to your website. And I just don't think you're going to beat that. You just can't. 
Sure. That's so, the way to go. So the, I agree. So so let's talk about SEO for just a brief second. How – in terms of getting good search engine optimization, how, how – uh, what's your, th- your, your viewpoint on that? How do you do that? You personally. Um, uh, again, I just said it. Uh, whoever your web people are, you know, during that first meeting that you have with them, uh, they have to have the capability to pull up, and I'm sorry, I don't remember what the website is, but there's um, a couple websites out there, and they'll pull up, you know, your your area. Let's, you know, for me, it's Denver. So, you know, what is the most popular words that? What are the top three most popular words that the buyers or or whatever sellers are using on their site, and use those words for whatever the top three are to advertise your website. Now, just realize that when you're coming in. I'm going to tell you 90% of all the leads coming in on, off the web are, are crap. So um, having somebody to sift through them rather than yourself is huge. You know, I would say um, a well-trained agent or assistant or something along those lines. Selling's a little bit different. Of course, you want the listings, uh, but you may want both. And, uh, you know, maybe to start that you take on both. But that's your success in a website. If you're doing anything else, you're going to, you're going to struggle. You know, other than, you know, sending out advertisements and things like that, um, we used to do huge things all over the place on, you know, Craigslist and all these different things to drive people there. But what we really found was um, a large percent of, percentage of them, again, at least 90 percent were going to be no good. But anyone that's really done it for a long period of time knows these numbers. Um, it's a numbers game. Sure, sure, sure. And 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 so and going back to my question, I was I was I wanted to know um in terms of SEO, do you get in there? You you talked about finding the three words. Like do you get into Google uh keyword search tool and that's how you find the three words or or uh, I believe that's it. Yeah, I mean the 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 site and forgive me, I don't remember what the site was because again it's been uh, a couple years since we've got on there and I've done a lot with it. But whatever the site is has the top 100 all in a row listed number uh, sure. actually it wasn't listed but they had a percentage next to it that showed which ones were the highest words and uh, those are the words that you want you know to be honest with you in a market like mine uh, listings that's the name of the game uh, you can handle 20 listings in a month and you can probably only handle five buyers max and they're gonna stretch you so you use the best you know use of your dollar and go for the listing stuff over there what is it, you know uh, whatever those words are, that's yep. what your SEO person will tell you. Okay. Now and that's you, what you need. I agree. Now, and I, and I think, and, and look, I'm not trying to throw a, a, a curveball at you, so I'm not going to even, I'm just going to say it's this. Okay. To the, um, so I think when it, when it comes to SEO, I mean, I think you certainly need to use the, you know, get the top keywords in your, in your tags and meta tags, but I think you also need to, you know, have a blog and focus on long tail keywords, and those might be specific neighborhoods uh, in your in your community. Um, so, guys, when you think about SEO, think about what what Jeff is saying right here. You know, the, the top keywords, throw them in your tags, your, throw them in your meta tags for your site, but also don't forget the the long tail keywords like Stonebrook Estates. Uh, write a little blog and and mention those specific communities, neighborhoods in your blog. Get them on your site. Uh, so that when people search that stay, Stone Ridge Estates, Denver, uh, you pop up. All right. So listen, we're going to ra- start wrapping up here right now. I'm going to ask you the same three questions I ask everybody. Um, and the first one is this, Jeff. You know, a guy like you, you've been at this for 15 years. You've had, you know, very big success. I know that you're scaling down for, for personal reasons, kind of taking some time uh, off. You know, who has been a mentor to you along your, along your road, whether that's personal or, or professionally? Oh, uh, hands down, no competition. The guys at Craig Proctor and the Platinum and the Diamond Group, those guys are it. If you're going to join a po- coaching program, uh, beware of some of the stuff that they have in selling their own products. Yep. And, and that's the only negative that I have to say about them. Other than that, everything is absolutely 100% phenomenal. Uh, the top agents in the country, uh, they share information uh, on what's working, what's not working, what they're doing. You're just not going to find a group of agents like that anywhere in the country. I mean, I, I started, I tried to do it in, within my own office, and 
it would didn't work because agents are so worried about their little slice of pie, which is so silly. Um, that's the number one thing. If you do anything, try and get in with those guys. And, and because, what? Uh, hold on, J- J- Jeff. Not to not to jump in there. What what specifically sure. did you did 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 you get out of that? Was it was it was it uh, strategies and tactics or or was it mindset? What what did you specifically get out of that? All of it. It's like a turnkey real estate McDonald's. That's exactly what it is. It's like you're buying into a real estate franchise when you join that group and when you qualify uh, for platinum. And even if you don't qualify for platinum or diamond, which few do, you can they'll still share information with you. And that's the key. If you surround yourself with people like that and they share everything, I mean, everything. Uh, to the key that opens the lock on your front door to the most complicated systems all spelled out how to do it. Hmm. It's buying a turnkey real estate company is it's just, there's nothing that compares to it. I've been part of Buffini. I have nothing bad to say about them. Uh, I, and same with by referral only. I've been part of them, nothing bad to say about them, but these guys are the best of the best. Okay. Okay. And great, and still, I have great friends to this day that are all there. Now, did you, did you, um, uh, when you went through the process, or, or, you know, here's the criticism I have for, with most coaches. Most coaches, they really haven't sold real estate in the past. Number one, number two, you know, their information is it it's, tends to be old and 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 like stupid, right? Which is, and again, I'm not saying this is about about Proctor Buffini, but I'm talking about most real estate coaches, you know, and it's, and I hear stuff all, you know, look, I talk with people like you all day long. So I know exactly what's Mm -hmm. working in, in across the nation right now. And I think with most coaches, they don't know that they don't know. They're trying to coach people and some of their stuff is old. Um, and, and, uh, it sounds like, it sounds like these guys, at least in your experience that that wasn't the case. So that's, that's awesome. Um, well, and I think, uh, and can I address sure, something there absolutely. for a second? Because I, I think you kind of touched on a point that is huge for real estate agents and especially newer agents uh, or agents trying to get someplace. What I've really noticed in the most important flaw in real estate companies is the owner of the company or the person, the managing broker. Who is the person that's training the realtors in each of the companies? Um, and I'll tell you right now, Nine, if you just ask yourself that question at the company you're with or the company that you're going to, is the person training me now or ever been a top real estate professional? And I'll tell you right now, at least 90% of the time, the answer is going to be no. Yep. And, um, you know, and I agree with you on all these systems. And that's why I was really careful to say also uh, about the Proctor system that, uh, the Proctor system is like Buffini and by referral only and all those things all combined. Keep in, keep in mind, it's a large, um, I want to call it a corporation, but let's just call it one of the largest real estate coaching companies out there. But it also, ha- the, the guys in there are using Buffini. Uh, so you want access to all the coaching systems that are working? It's there. Just be careful, you know, not to buy into, you know, forgive me, Mr. Proctor, because I, I, I loved your coaching system, but don't buy into their websites and some of the things they offer until you really find out what's going on. Because their website, for instance, uh, and at the time, this was a year or two ago, was a templated site. And I'm sorry, it was worthless. Uh, But not really, because if you advertised it on something and drove people there, it worked. Uh, But as far as SEO, you know, it didn't work. Whereas you can use the same aspects of what's on the website on a custom site and get all the above. Yep. Yep. I 100% agree. Uh, look, I don't know if you read books, but we always ask for a book recommendation and I need to be better at teeing people up on this. Um, so he- here's the setup, Jeff. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today? The Millionaire Next Door. The Millionaire Next Door. The, that's, that's, that's the first time this has come up. Hold on. Who wrote that? Next door. Here we go. You know, I don't remember off of the top of my head because I don't I don't read a whole lot. But the important aspects of that book is is that who you're affiliating yourself with, what groups are you part of? You know, you want to move up in the real estate world. I'm just going to be honest with you. When I got into this business, I 
before I started my school, I had hair down to my butt, and I was a long, I was a lead guitar player for a rock band. And when I got into it, uh, none of my friends could buy a house on their best house buying day. I mean, they're a bunch of musicians. So who are you surrounding yourself with? What's your sphere of influence? Who are the people that you hang out with? What groups are you part of? That book, and that just touches on part of it, uh, is is a lot of the keys of what you need to know. To, to move up in this business and your clientele. Yeah, and and, and I, that's that's in life, man. You know, move up in this business, move up in life. And and that, you know, that reminds me of a quote that I often talk about on this show. It's, you know, Jim Rohn says, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, and, and look, that's what I love about this show is that people out there, whether you're in Poughkeepsie, New York, or wherever, you know, they get access to, to people like you. They get access to people who are doing a thousand deals a year when they would never have access again. So, so everybody listening, man, that's take that from Jeff level up and look at you and you guys, if you want this book, um, the millionaire next door, the surprising secrets of America's wealthy, uh, written by Thomas Stanley and William D. Danko, get a free copy on us. Use our link. Just go to audibletrial.com slash super agents live and get a free copy hey jeff uh thanks man um here's the thing i always uh, i always encourage my audience if they've gotten anything out of this episode uh this time with you i i ask them to reach out and say thank you to you and look maybe i know you're scaling back up maybe someone wants to join your team maybe they're you know out there in denver um where can people find you jeff at your denver home team.com got it all right, you're Denver Home Team to come. Hey, Jeff, I'll be the first to kick off the thank you train. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate you taking the time out. Hey, thank you. See you, man. All right, bye. Let's go. Yeah.